<laughs> um, a very warm welcome to everyone here and to everyone um, with us on Zoom this morning and to everyone who will listen to the recording or watch the recording later in the week. So a reminder that the service is being recorded um, for CD and onto our private YouTube channel, um, which is uploaded to the Congregation Facebook page. From September, um, the leadership team would like to make the recording public on our public Facebook page and on our website to allow everybody um, to access our services. Um, but if anyone does have any concerns about that, um, please let myself or another steward know. Um, and we will, of course, take that into account. So um, that's just something to, to think about. So it's, of course, a service of Holy Communion this morning. And just a reminder for anyone on Zoom, um, if you would like to find something to eat and drink so that you can take part later on at the appropriate time, then please do that. And I'd just like to draw your attention to a vacancy board over here. This is the um, list and information about real key jobs that we have um, vacant at the moment um, in, within the church. Um, so if you would like to have a look at those and see if, um, prayerfully consider if anything there is something that you feel you could um, support us with, um, that would be wonderful. And then just a welcome to our minister, Reverend Ali Jones. It's wonderful to have him um, with us this morning. And um, just a moment of quiet now as we prepare for our service. Good morning. It's lovely to be back with you again. Thankfully, in the new quarterly plan, I am here a little more often. Regard this as a work in progress. <laughs> we will see what we will see, but it is good to be here. And may I say, lovely to see old friends. Come on, stand up. <laughs> oh, come on, you can't be scared by now, sir. And <laughs> And your dearly beloved, there we go, thank you, wonderful to see you again. And I'm sure everybody will love catching up with you afterwards, if you're able to stay, yeah, excellent. Uh, please don't take it personally, I need to dash, it's, <laughs> but there we go. <sighs> Sorry to bring the tone of the service down as we begin but I need to inform you of the death of Raymond Parker. Unfortunately, it's one of those situations that we have seen too often of cycling and his wheel got stuck in the tram lines and he went over and hit his head. So we will obviously remember Raymond and Barbara in our prayers later. Our prayers are also asked for Ralph and Kathleen, who are both going through a difficult stage at the moment. So please, during your prayers during the week, do remember all of these good folk, as well, obviously, as anyone else of whom you know. Let us pause. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We begin our worship with hymn number 25, God is here.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for the many things that we have known that have charmed our hearts and given us insight into you. We thank you for your presence with us during all this week gone by, for those occasions when you have comforted us, when we have been sad. The times when you have picked us up, when we have been cast down. When you have rested with us as we are at rest. We thank you for all the many material gifts we have. For we are blessed, amazingly so, amongst the peoples of the world. We thank you for your love that stretches out to all the world and that we see in the actions of charities and individuals sharing your love with those in need. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the life of Raymond Parker and for all who were touched by his witness. We thank you for the love that he and Barbara have known and pray for them. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the wonder of knowing your goodness, the wonder of being in your presence. And so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the world. We thank you and we praise you for all you are to us. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Son. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I should explain, I hadn't forgotten how the Lord's Prayer starts. It's just I was about to choke and I was looking for my drink. <sighs> Perfectly simple at times, these explanations. I don't know whether I've ever told you, but I was once on a visit to a mosque uh, with a group of students. And one of them turned to the imam and said, can I ask about the significance of that curtain? And the imam said, well, you see, it's actually very important because if it isn't drawn, we get a draft. <laughs> Sometimes we can massively overcomplicate things, but quite simple on this occasion. Our next hymn is number 662. Have you heard?
receive these our gifts and ourselves the gifts. Take, we pray, giver and gift alike, and use us all that we may be spent by you for the good of all your people and the glorification of your name, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Our reading is taken from Genesis numbers, chapter 6, verses 5 to 10. It can be found on page 7 in the Pew Bibles. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. The Lord, so the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. <clears throat> this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Thank you. Isn't it lovely when you're amongst the righteous few? It's really interesting, I think, the way in which some of the Bible stories are tended to be viewed as cleaned up, shall we say. Because we think of the flood narrative as being the cleansing of the earth. It's genocide. Genocide on a scale otherwise unimaginable. And not just of humanity, but of all the animals, except presumably the righteous two of each species. How you were to judge the righteous two of cats, I don't know. Can't understand those creatures at the best of times. But, but... This is a story that actually really should horrify us. It's behind. terrifying. It yes, speaks God. of God in a way that is utterly ruthless. But it also says that the righteous are saved. And there's a bit of a danger in that. Would you like to count yourself amongst the righteous? Do you count yourself among the righteous? It's very interesting. When I was growing up, I remember several times my mother trying to convince me of the reality of Christianity by saying, well, look at how many people there are who worship God worldwide. Isn't that an indicator? And I remember even at that age thinking, well, in that case, Hinduism has it. If we're just talking pure numbers, is numbers anything to convince us? I don't mean the book in the Bible. That's a problem, that book. But yes. Do numbers convince us of righteousness? I was once in a URC synod and the general secretary came to talk to us about the state of the church and he said there are so many people within the walls and there's all of these outside the walls who in the census have spoken about people who love god and well i'm a christian really and he said and 
What we are, of course, are the faithful few. And I stuck up my hand, and he knew me well, so he knew he was in trouble. And he said, yes, Alistair. And I said, in any other context, would you view the views of the majority as of less value than the views of the minority? Are you not a Democrat, David? He was shaken to the core. There are times when we have to appreciate that what we are saying is that we are outside the norm. And that the way we approach society can leave others feeling less than righteous. I don't know about you, but I'd like everyone on the ark. I'd like everyone on the ark. Because everybody deserves a second chance at the very least, do they not? And we are a people who believe in salvation. I would like everyone on the ark. Being the righteous few and knowing you're the righteous few is a very dangerous thing indeed. We sing hymn number 610, 610, which uses as its title uh, the words that are attributed as John Wesley's final words, that best of all is God is with us. Now, I've searched a little further and I've discovered his actual last words, which were, fat is dropping from the clouds. I just leave that with you for your consideration and wisdom. But I do think these are better last words. <clears throat> best of all is God is with us. second lesson is from Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 to 8. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, 
Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. You will be named Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Cana, where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Thank you very much. So we know the nations of Israel, don't we? Israel and Judah. Does that make many nations? I don't think so. I think if Abraham is being told he will be the father of many nations, it extends to rather more than simply that. It's a matter of being the patron, the father of many lands and peoples. But I will give you Canaan in perpetuity forever. Isn't that lovely for the Canaanites? Several times the Israelites are told to go and take a city and then to slaughter every member of it. On occasion, you're to go in and kill all the, all the adults, all the children, and all the cattle. My, what a peaceful, loving God we have. Or do we think by any chance that this might be humans justifying horrible actions? I'm sure we never see that in the present day, do we? Yeah, everything is always absolutely fine and our leaders are wonderful and every popular emotion is absolutely controlled and righteous. Are we to expect better of those who came before us? Tragically, are we to expect better of those who come after us? It would be nice, wouldn't it? But unfortunately, the reality is that we are in a world that allows people to run riot with their own opinions, their own agenda, their own righteousness over anybody else. But that's okay because we see how the Israelites are treating the inhabitants of the land of Canaan here and now, and that's okay because God told them to. You agree? Of course not. Of course not. The whole idea of one people being called righteous over another is a massive difficulty. The idea that we can look at a people and say we are better than they is a massive problem. The reality is that everyone is a child of God. Everyone has the right to know themselves loved by God and not to be told that because of an accident of birth, they are less. I know why we have our yellow and blue ribbons on the fence, but it does slightly worry me 
as to the emotion of anybody of Russian extraction going past. Our one entire people to be judged for the actions of their leaders. We look at a world that is far from simple. We look at a world, however, where we can pretend that it is simple, where we can say that if we treat people this particular way, then we can get on and do things more easily, you know? It's so much easier if we put people in a box marked with a label because then we can understand them, can't we? There was one occasion when a chair of district met my father at a synod and said, ah, Clifford Jones, and how is your... And my father said you could see him riffle through the filing system in his head. And how is your Scottish wife? Because he had him labelled. It was easier to know people by labels than to know them as an individual. And that's a real peril, a real peril. I want everyone on the ark, even Vladimir Putin. I want everyone on the ark because everybody deserves at least a second chance. I have said that to Jenny when I was getting married for the third time. Everyone deserves at least a second chance. We face a God who in many ways is described in the scriptures in ways we find difficult. But we face a God who sent Christ Jesus, that we may know forgiveness, we may know salvation, we may know life in all its fullness with one another and with God forevermore. Thanks be to God. Amen. We bring our prayers for the world. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray for every people who feel excluded, every people who are denigrated, we pray that they may know that they are loved by you as well as any other people. We pray for those who feel different, outside of society, hemmed off mentally or physically. And we pray that they may know that they are yours and find a way that they may feel loved. We pray that we may never be part of the problem in this regard, but always the solution reaching out to everyone. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of those whose lives are touched by violence. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people faced by continuing small wars of which we hear little. We pray for those whose lives are touched by crime. Those who know domestic violence. O oh Lord, we pray that all your people may know peace that is not simply a cessation of violence, 
but your presence within each heart and mind. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of those who are suffering in one way or another, physically, mentally, spiritually. We pray for Ralph and Kathleen. We pray for Barbara and her family. We pray for each one we know to be in need of your presence and love. O oh Lord, you healed of old, heal now, we pray. But where it is not your will that a body be made whole or a mind healed to perfection, we pray that in the presence of your spirit, we may know a wholeness and a healing and rejoice one with another in your goodness. Lord, we pray for all of the peoples around the world who are cleaning up after the devastating floods they have faced. And for all of those who suffer now from drought. Into this world, we pray you would give our leaders sense and sensitivity that they may work for all your people's goodness to bring ecological wholeness to your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and let our cry come unto you. Amen. And we bring our prayer of confession Oh Lord, there are times when we have been the problem rather than the solution. For those times, we bring our confession now. There have been times when we have simply turned aside from need that we have seen. And for those times, we bring our confession now. For each time that we have put the needs of others after our own and have turned aside from the path that you have shown us, we bring our confession now. O oh Lord, we pray that we may know your forgiveness within us, that we may know ourselves from sin and guilt set free, that we may rejoice in your presence and live for your world. Amen. And so we approach our act of Holy Communion Again, this will be without responsive liturgy. This is because I have been made aware of the periodic failure of the projector. And therefore, it strikes me as easier if we're not relying on such a thing for the moment. But hopefully, all will be rectified in the near future. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You. Amen. We sing our communion hymn number 568. Alleluia. Sing to Jesus.
Please be seated. And so we come, as Christ's people have always been called to come to share in Christ's goodness. Some believe that they should not take communion, but always bless each meal they attend and share in those. Some believe that a day is not complete without taking communion. Wesley did say that once a day is scarce sufficient for the good of a man's soul. He also advised his ministers not to take it more than five times a day. <laughs> and so we come. So we come as Christ has called us to bless the food and drink we take, in this case, bread and wine, that they may be for us the symbol of Christ, so that we may know the reality of Christ within, that these elements are not changed, but we are transformed absolutely and utterly and for all eternity for christ called his friends together for their passover meal and when the time came to break the loaf and pass it around he took it and broke it having blessed it and passed it and said eat this all of you this is my body broken for you take and eat do this in remembrance of me and then at the end of the meal he poured the cup of wine and passed it to them saying this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins take and drink it all of you do this in remembrance of me and so in remembrance of him and in obedience to his word we come to share together in god's love to share together in christ's transforming presence and so O oh lord we pray that this bread and this wine may be hallowed for our use, that we may know ourselves transformed by your love and power within, and serve you afresh this day for all of our lives. Amen. As Christ took bread, so we take bread we break and share that all of god's people may know his goodness as christ took wine so we take wine that all may know the taste the savor the unity of christ's people together We are blessed. Let us receive in joy and in grace. May I ask those who are engaged in the distribution to come and join me. Now, although in the past we have served the plate and individual taken the bread and served the glasses and individuals taken those, we have quite a bit of bread and quite a few closely placed glasses so you will be served by the servers but we will all i assure you use the uh, joys of the hand gel and as ever given the nature of the hand gel if we're a little too liberal with it this is the one occasion you may imbibe 
alcohol on Methodist premises. <laughs> The feast is prepared. Come, eat and drink. Body of Christ broken for you. The 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 body of Christ broken for you. Thank you. 
broken for you. Body of Christ, 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 broken for you.
O oh Lord, may hands that have touched holy things be used by you. May lives that are touched by you be lived to your glory and your praise, now and forevermore. Amen. We sing our final hymn, number eight. Thank you. <laughs> the eyes really are going, and the memory even further. God with us, Creator, Father. of God, the love of Christ, the power of the Spirit, fill us and take us forth from this place, that we may be part of the process that brings all the people to the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I have something to tell you, which is that you have been inspiring a work of art because Caroline Balfour has been at home with a blank canvas and with lots of paint and has been painting a work of art inspired by this morning's service. So if my words haven't been any good, <laughs> I hope your singing has. As I say, unfortunately, I need to whisk away immediately after the service, so please do take my apologies for not coming through to the coffee, but I'm sure you have another minister you would gladly greet. <laughs> God bless all. <laughs>